Both the parents, both about Hajara, may peace be upon her, the mother of Ismail alayhi salam, as well as Ibrahim alayhi salam. And we, it's very famous, we know how Ibrahim alayhi salam was tested by Allah time and again. He was once thrown in the fire as a test by Allah. He trusted Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fire cooled down for him. So we know that Ibrahim alayhi salam went through a lot of tests in his life. And the excellent part is it's not just he himself, but his better half, even his wife, Hajara, may peace be upon him. We see a great deal of sacrifice done for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sake. We see a great deal of submission in her actions too. So here we have two parents, the mother and the father, absolutely submitting their will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we saw the example of Ibrahim alayhi salam ready to slaughter his own son. And on the other hand, we can see the example of Hajara, may peace be upon her, as to how what kind of decisions, what kind of difficult decisions she took in her life. And for that, let's go back to the time when Ibrahim alayhi salam had left Hajara, may peace be upon her, and her son Ismail alayhi salam in a lonely valley of Makkah. So during that time, there were no people, no marketplaces, no people around, and it was just a barren valley of Makkah, lonely valley of Makkah, where Ibrahim salam was commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to leave his wife and child. And without a doubt, without uh, any iota of doubt, he believed uh, and he submitted to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and left his family in that lonely valley. And imagine the scene where Hajra, may peace be upon him, is may, may peace be upon her, is running after her husband and asking her, Oh Ibrahim, why have you left us here? There are no people inside, there's no water inside, there are there is no uh, sign of life over here. Why do you want to leave us here in this lonely valley? And Ibrahim alayhi doesn't answer. She keeps on asking her as husband, Oh Ibrahim, why are you leaving me and the child here? And finally, when Ibrahim salam doesn't answer, she notices, she understands it must be the will of Allah. And she asks, is this the will of Allah? Is this the command of Allah that we are supposed to stay here? And Ibrahim salam re replies in the affirmative. And subhanAllah, just look at the answer of Hajra, may peace be upon her. She says, then Allah is enough for us. And here you have a, a, a lady with a small baby in her hand, ready to be in a lonely valley with no one around and ready to do that because she has, it's her important, for her it's more important to submit to the will of Allah than to worry about her child. The mother had, look at the intelligent decision uh, this mother made and subhanAllah she stays in the valley of Makkah and we all know when the child Ismail alayhi salam began to feel thirsty, when she began to feel thirsty, then she looks for water and she runs between the two mountains, the mountain of Safa and the mountain of Marwa in, in the Makkah Valley. And she runs between them seven times looking for water. And finally Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends help and the angel comes and strikes to the ground. And there you go, the, the flow of Zamzam starts, which is flowing till now and the well is still keeps filling up and inshallah it will keep filling up till the last day on this earth uh, so subhanallah this sacrifice that the that both the parents made is is an excellent evidence for us that both the parents of ismail alayhi salam were had it very clear in them that their goal was to always submit to the wills of, will of allah under any circumstances and naturally we saw a child doing even better by, by giving his own life for the cause of Allah. So isn't this an example of a perfect family, subhanAllah? The whole family's goal is to submit to the will of Allah 
and a child as small as Ismail is ready to give his own life, is ready to give his own uh, uh, life for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even though he's such at such an age where he's not grown up into an adult. An adult can make, you know, heavy decisions quite quickly, but a child may, may get scared. But subhanAllah, Ismail alayhi salam did not get scared. It's because of the strong parenting and the strong values that Hajarah may peace be upon her, her his mother, as well as his father, Ibrahim alayhi salam, had put in this child. So what is the best form of learning? Is it, is it making our children sit and hear lectures from us? That you need to do this and you need not to do this. That you need to love Islam. You need to be proud of it. Or is it that the children learn more by looking at the actions of their own parents? In the example of the life of Ibrahim salam and his way of teaching Ismail salam, it shows there are more examples of his own submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of is his own honesty to his work, of his own honesty to himself and his mother that has affected the child. We often find a child as young as a two-year-old imitating the parent of what the parent does mostly. Like if the father is mostly on the phone, you may find that one-year or two-year-old baby trying to imitate the father by using the cell phone. Even though the father did not make make the baby get trained to do that. So subhanAllah, you always notice that the children are visual learners. They look and they learn. So much is the effect of visual learning that once there was a debate as to why women are more into gossiping and men not, not as often as women. And this was a question, a debate that was going on and, it, and the question was put to a scientist and he was asked as to why do you think that women grow up more gossiping than men and especially uh, uh, in, this, in, this, in the part where ladies are less respected or less a girl child is less respected than a boy child. So in, in societies where the girl child is not as welcomed as the boy child, you often see the same societies making women grow into more having a pessimistic attitude than the men. So this was a, a debate, a research being done about why women would think more pessimistically than men. And the answer to this question was given by a scientist and this scientist, he said that in a society where a girl child is less welcomed, people notice that children are always into a learning mode with their eyes. So a child as, as small as one year or two year old, if she's a girl baby and if the mother is neglecting the girl baby and she's more respecting and more caring about her boy baby, the little one year or two year old child can actually understand that with her eyes. She can actually take, she actually, children of those age have photographic memory. And they notice whether their father is happy with them, whether their mother is happy with them. So if a girl child is crying and the mother is late with the milk for her, but if the boy child cries, she's faster with the milk, children notice that. Children notice emotions. They study the emotions of the parents. And ultimately, the answer given by this scientist was because the, chi the girl child is not treated as equally as a boy child, they grow up to be pessimist. They don't grow with that optimistic minds. So subhanAllah, a great example uh, can be seen in the visual learning of children. So it's very important that if you want to do to be an excellent, you want to do a great job at parenting, you need to be the best first. It's because your children are going to look up to you. You are the hero for your children. So they are going to look up to you and they are going to see how honest is my father with his, himself. How honest is my mom with herself? And this visual learning will give a greater impact than anything else. 
So it's it's well said when when it's being uh, said that actions are.